there, everyone. Welcome back to TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And right now, it's March 17th, 1971, which we are doing... Or actually, technically, we've already done off-screen. Or at least I have done off-screen. The Nepotism Act. Now, let's read this one first before we get to the one we're actually currently doing. <coughs> we can finally propose the first of our acts of Parliament. The Nepotism Act. This act will work to combat the growing nepotism that is plaguing Parliament and our government in general. While it definitely can be seen as an overreach of our powers, the idea has been criticized for the past 2,000 years by many of the great philosophers. Such men as Aristotle, Valuvar, and Confucius has criticized the idea of this. Valuvar himself condemned nepotism as both evil and unwise. While our society and way of life has changed since these great men walked the earth, the ideas they have still stand in our culture currently. Their views on nepotism are very current to our ideals, and we must learn from them. And then we are currently doing a focus called... Actually, which one are we doing? Um, oh, it's over here. This one. The one who got away. Although we managed to drive Butch and most dangerous hardliners out of a party, one notable man r remains. <clears throat> Kim Philby. Or Philby, the head of MI6, has been effective in keeping England free of foreign agents, however his political leanings, and the position of power makes him a possible liability if he draws ire. Drastic measures will need to be kicked out, uh, will, will be needed to kick him out. He has entrenched himself in the intelligence community, and if they manage to catch wind of our efforts, it could bring the end of our government's mandate, however, perhaps we need not be enemies. If he gave several concessions to MI6, Philby will be willing to overlook our ideological differences and work with us, but is giving more power to the man we trust, or distrust, really a good idea? In which we have to eventually isolate him, or the best of best. Well, realistically, we need more political power, so... And I don't want to give the hardliners any more of a boost, so... We're going to go too dangerous to be left alone. Philby has left, or has been an effective MI6 director, but he possesses a great, or poses a great threat to our government. We can't be sure if he hasn't kept in touch with Birch and other hardliners, and if he's working to further their goals. We honestly have little clue what really goes on at Vol Hall Cross. For all we know, that could be plotting against us as we speak. Something must be done about Phil B at fast. So right now, we like I did the nepotism act off screen just because it's pretty much done. And once again, I just, we just have to do that in DL. We, there's no other way we can do it. So um, as you can see, we don't have a lot of political power. We have point five four. This is really not a great position to be in. <clears throat> and as we come over here. You can definitely see that we're going to lose the next election. But hopefully that doesn't happen with the next election, but an enigma of a man. Kim Phil will be a great spy, a master of deception, the best double agent in the side of Europe, a man so good at his job that he ran circles around the entire royal party and never got caught. But most importantly, an absolute effing question mark of a man. How the heck am I supposed to get dirt on him if I don't even know where he's half the time? Wilson sat down, grabbing a cup of tea with a resigned look on his face. There will come an opportunity, Harold, Bill responded softly. Even the best mistakes make mistakes. And when he does, then you'll get him. <clears throat> and what if he doesn't? What if he acts against me? I know he wants to, he's just waiting for the right moment. Then we'll have, to a, prob then we'll have a problem on our hands, but he will too. How is he going to explain to everybody that you had to be taken down and the course reverse? People like what you're doing, they just won't buy it on the spot. Just be careful, don't try to get dirt on him and watch out so he doesn't get dirt on you. Maybe you're right, I can't have, have everything go as I wanted to after all. At least Birch is out of the game, so... <clears throat> really, I'd, I'll do this route when we go as a hardliner someday probably. So, over here we have no... I went down this way first just because we need time to finish off the act for um the nepotism act so i needed more time to do that because we need to do all this stuff as well the uh, socialist education act but we're going to do no better than the fash um let's do cleaning parliament first i'm lose the political power <clears throat> we can use philby or philby and helping us investigate the many members of parliament who have possible ties to businesses and corporations these men and women have possibly no use for being in these positions other than being puppets for the corporations that control them the investigations will look into many parts, or any, many of the MPs, who have history with these groups, however. Because our party needs to clean itself, we are strictly not looking at the NDL only. Corruption and lobbying is a bipartisan issue, and we must work towards to get these MPs out of Parliament, and replace them with more trustworthy individuals, who have their allegiance to the people first, and their party second, of course. Cool. Uh, there was one comment saying that I should try a highlight video, or something like that, um, for my channel. Yeah, I th I, actually, I'm not going to say I haven't been trying to do one, like, get a short going, but... I have, I have had that in the back of my mind for a while, put it like that, but that English history is written. This state's monthly job, uh, domestic job growth will be increased by 0.1%. Not really much has happened there with that one, okay. But hey, you know, I'll rather take it than not have it. 20 billion! Oh boy, that's a lot. But that's right, so yeah. Um, apparently I said yesterday, like, a lot of the time you can't hear the special music that happens uh, when you do, like, get super events, like British reunification. Apparently someone did say that, uh, they can still hear it if they have headphones on. I think a lot of the time, uh, not all of you guys use headphones, which is totally fine. Your buds, headphones, or whatever. It just, it's what usually happens. I didn't realize the Danes were so cool. <laughs> so cool, wow. Oh, yeah, oil crisis too. Of course, it is like almost halfway through 1971. So it is what it is. But my main goal is to at least get through every single focus. We'll see what happens. I'm not sure if we can get through every single one here. But we'll see. We'll definitely see. Also, um, we've already done a Navy Protect Coast. If you want to read that one again, please go right ahead. 
And of course, we did lessons from the Civil War, but we'll see what happens. Uh, oh, to last forever, to second night of the long knives. Very nice. Too dangerous to be left alone. Ooh. Oh, actually, wait. We can just go this one at. Oh, we can just go ahead and do this one, too. Alright, well, the socialist education. Let's do that one, then we can go back up, up here, too. Education is a very important part of our society. Thinkers of the past and current day have said that an educated society is the strongest society. Our party and government strongly agree with this statement. The better we are at education, the better our children will be at life and in turn more educated about the world and the issues that it has. Now that English society can be seen as socialist now, it's only fair that we discuss socialism in our education program, unlike some of the other education systems of the world. We will discuss all branches of socialism, from the most authoritarian to the most liberal. While we may have some op opponents of this, we only wish to include the good types of socialism. It is only right that we tell both sides of the story to remain fair. But sometimes there's more than just two sides to a story. Sometimes there are three, four. Or maybe there's no side to a story. And we're all living in a simulation, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, it is 71. Do we get any better? Hello. Wow, it's like Ah, that's why. Ivan has gone kaboom. Goodbye, Ivan. Oh, Oxfordshire? That's not, like, it was 24 or 25. I still can build anything there, which is very weird, but whatever. We also accept it for now. Um, there's really no, nowhere else we can really build stuff, which really does suck, but... Oh, well. Oh, well. <clears throat> So after this, we're going to spend a lot of political power trying to get the next vote done, too, so. Alright, the socialist education followed up with... What? Hmm. Of course, we have to bring them up. Uh, moderates as well. We need to complete... You have no business in democracy. No better than the fascist socialist education act. <clears throat> Cleaning parliament? Uh, actually, if that's a case... Fighting corruption is fine. Um, that's the last act we need to do, so let's try to get to this act as fast as possible. Isolate him. If we want to remove Philby as a threat once and for all, we must work to isolate him from his people in MI6. Wiretapping his phones, tailing him at every opportunity is a good start. We will work with MI5 to watch our airports in case Philby gets wise and wants a quick exit, of course. We must be several steps ahead of him at all times. My apologies about this. I need to go ahead and do this real quick. Thank you. <clears throat> Just so we can let time go on a little bit more, 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 more. And... Finally, the trustworthy elements within the agency will work to bring a divide between Philby and the rest of MI6. We must bring down the goodwill Philby has with his peers. Make them begin to work against him, of course. He must learn that his days as MI6 chief are over. And he get some political power, which is actually very, very nice. Yeah, okay, volunteer only is point eight, huh? All right, cool, I mean, let's see. What's stability here? We have a lot of red, but quite a bit of green. Quite a bit, which is nice. Oil crisis hurts us, poverty hurts us, equal rights, gender equality, decriminalized stuff. They all hurt us, which sucks. But, let's see. <clears throat> Two, ooh! Um. That is a difference of less than 30. We don't have the other groups to do this enough with. Hmm. There you go. The NDL like socialism. Can confirm. We can confirm the NDL like socialism. That looks so bad now. Look at that. Oh my goodness. But isolate him. Put him on solitary confinement. Everything we can find. All wiretapping tapping efforts have paid off, giving us great insight into Philby's efforts. It seems he's shaping MSI 6 into an agency of his own, accountable only to him. <clears throat> we must drive him up before he becomes too entrenched in our government. Conveniently for us, we may have what we need to bring him down once and for all. An informant, while off duty at a bar in London, overheard former diplomat Guy Burgess drunkenly recall his involvement in a Soviet spy ring alongside Kim Philby during the war. If we can verify these claims, it could be enough to turn the country against him. Which would be a very good thing. Ah, oh. 0.41. Well, it's better than it was yesterday. Uh, we can do this too, but we, we, as you can see, we really need to keep that political power. How much more? How many more events do we have? We have at least one more act to pass, which is this one down here. The White Organizations Act. Find everything we can find. Bring the moderates. So we're going to pass social education, so that's good. Hopefully we get everything done before uh, the elections happen. When is the next Actually, when is the next election? Um, especially when is the next election? I have no idea, but whatever. <clears throat> it's over, Philby. After we get about uh, better APCs, of course. Thank you. All right, all right, all right. Effects of unification, great. Walsh, civil unrest. All of the pieces are in place. Documents and interrogations of members of the supposed spy ring known by them and Soviet intelligence as a Cambridge Five have implicated Kim Philby as a key member of the spy ring. His betrayal person and his drug will turn MI6 and the public against him. Our plan is to leak an MI6 internal investigation, started by us, of course, to the media. They will go bonkers of the new secret communists and our government. Although his association with our party could hurt us, we could always tie him to Birch's hardliners. It could even be an opportunity to gain greater control of our party, although we will lose some of the work Philby has put into strengthening strengthening the MI6. We at least have someone reliable and control. Communism? I guess communism technically does exist here. And there goes those guys. They're killing each other now, too. Um, 
thought it would just be authoritarian socialists, but okay. I guess they're just straight up commies in this one. All right. It's over, Philby. We have the high ground. Why does it keep going back to that side? The yeah, Aquasis. Okay, so cool. So, academic base slowly gets better. Uh, Socialist Labor Party's progress will support... Uh, get double support. Or no, one support for progress. And polities uh, will increase in every own state. Which is nice. Even though we lose a ton of stability. But whatever. Focus on the far right. With the MI6 more agreeable to our needs, we can focus on another plague on a society. One that unfortunately, as a result of uh, collaboration, which was the emboldening of the far-right factions within England, whether they be collaborators or worse, we must root them out of our society. They must learn that we are not welcome, or they're not welcome, in our new England. Every time I say New England, I'm always thinking, of course, of this region here. Very kind of a cool region. Especially during winter, very cold. It's alright though. Uh, please, at least, can we end this campaign at least getting a one level of poverty increase? Because without it, I feel like we've, I won't say wasted it, but like, it could be so much more fulfilling. And it looks like the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic is realistically probably going to win under Zukov. That's a lot of manpower. And you have like almost none. You have literally almost four times as many factories as these guys now. That El Suckos. It's over, Philby. It's over. Uh, how big is the Ionite's Pact? Oh, it's still pretty thick. They didn't get hungry. Man, I'd hate to be hungry in this timeline. Look at literally three three fronts to take care of. Jesus Christ, that'd be terrible. But Hungary and Focus Tree when? Oh, that'd be a, a submod. I know there's a submod working on Hungary and Romania, I think. The Carpathian Union? Carpathian submod? Something like that. I don't remember. The Wider Organizations Act. These wider organizations are racial tr or racist traitors. Only allowed to continue because of the traitors in the collaboration government. Now that we are in charge, we will introduce a lot of parliament that shall ban these racist, outdated institutions that have plagued England with their hateful rhetoric. Although some might balk at the notion of banning organizations because of their speech, we cannot allow racism to have any foothold in our country. And we get the anti-fascist bill. Ah, and there goes Russia, reunified on September 15th, or 14th, really, 1971. Return to the front. The old front strikes back as we're building up a whole lot of forts. Oh, yeah, we got Brittany here, too. Look at that. That's actually really nice. Too oh, wait, I thought, doesn't Ireland, like, every single time, like, join the, the Ionites Pact, I mean? The Ionites Pact? That is a little strange, not gonna lie. That is definitely a little, 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 little strange. And also, oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, we do this one too. Unite the public. Yeah, that would be good to do as well. And I definitely want to do this one next. Just because we want to get through every act possible. And do well with it. Focus on the far right. Follow it up with what? What are we going to finish up with? Uh, follow up with, at least. Alright. Cleaning a cleansing parliament. Or cleaning it. We can use Philippi in, in helping us investigate the many members of parliament who have possible ties of businesses and corporations. These men and women have possibly no use for being in these positions other than being puppets for the corporations that control them, of course. The investigations will look into many of the MPs who have history with these groups. However, because our party needs to clean itself, we are strictly not looking at the NDL only. Corruption and lobbying is a bipartisan issue and we must work towards to get these MPs out of parliament and replace them with the more trustworthy individuals who have their allegiance to the people first. And the party second, which... Did I just read that one? My apologies. It just, I didn't really care about research anymore. Research doesn't really matter, so... At least right now, at 71, the campaign's, like, as you can tell, probably almost over. But still. Oh, look, United Arab Emirates States. That's, that's kind of cool. Syria, Ba'atis, Iraq, Arabian Republic. Very nice. Ah, uh, let's go vote, my friends. Islamic Republic of Iran is looking pretty darn good. I like your hat, Karim. It's a very nice hat. Oh, 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 say that. It must be Africa or something. Cleaning Parliament. Who needs PP? Um, yeah, I'll just do this one again. 305. That should be the last act, but I'm going to save our PP just in case you never know. Because we definitely want to get New Britain, but we'll follow up. We have no business in democracy. You have no business. Now that we have a list of individuals who have ties to these corporations, we can dispatch con constables and remove them on charges of corruption. Many of the MPs who will be persecuted will call us out, labeling us as no better than the collaborators, however. We are planning on releasing the list of these MPs to the public to garner opinion on these current events. Along with these, we will begin to ban MPs from Parliament and general politics in general who have significant backing from corporations and have been elected through less legal means. Once we have filtered the muck from Parliament, we can replace them with more friendly individuals as we have precisely planned. Maybe even a few extra SLP MPs, because what's the harm, of course? Um, I really don't think we have another act here. I hope not, because we can actually boost up our own support if we do it again. A New Britain, England, Arise. Are there any acts here? Oh, because that's a, the... Fia Funny Masker. Uh, it really doesn't look like it, so... You know what? We might just be safe here. I could be wrong about this. Let's go do that anyways. 
do some reformer stuff. Why not? Throw in one for reformists. They'll probably never win another election, but that's okay. Cool. And we lost political power because the last one. Hey, everyone, finally we got something else here. If you like to read about better industrial equipment, please, please, please go right ahead. Excellent. Factory complexes. You know what? If I compared to like uh, the USSR to us, like they could have better like factory lines than us. So that's kind of sad. I'll be honest. That's actually quite sad. But we can do bring in the moderates. Now that we've cleansed the SLP of the radicals and quasi-fascists, we can replace them with more moderate social MPs. We as a party would never inflate parliament with our own members. That would be seen as treason and possibly give the radical elements in our party even more power like the commies. However, now that we've begun to clean out most of the communists and the remnants of the fringe ideologies, we can begin to imp bring in more moderate MPs. These men and women alike would have similar ideology to the many other non-radical MPs of the party. As these MPs slowly began to get into parliament, it should make passing acts more easily. Uh, it even looks like the old Labor Party now. Let's just hope it lasts, this time at least. I guess we'll see. I'll have to wait and see. The act pass is great. English is Jen. Oh, NDL Patriot League goes down. That's that's all it does. Wow, that kind of sucks. And then hopefully get a new Britain. Many said that our ideals were impossible. Many said that Britain would never accept socialism or that we would destroy the country with our outrageous ideas. There was a time when our critics counted down the days until the next election to make sure it would be our last. We proved them, of course, wrong. We have totally restructured British society to serve the people, rather than corporations or corrupt politicians. Our education system now gives our children a more positive outlook on good old socialism. We have reigned in our intelligence agency, for better or for worse, so raise the scarlet standard high, boys, for it shall fly over a new Britain. Absolutely. Like, look, and the debt is now almost at the same level as our GDP. Oh, happy day. Hmm. Oh, that's actually looking a little better than it was before. That's pretty nice. Yeah, then else here, huh? All right, then so be it. So be it. Bring in Le Madurets. Follow it up with this one. Uh, New Britain, very good. Now I'm gonna go back up here. Uh, actually, you no, know, we can do this one too. I'm gonna do all these focuses. Too useful to ignore. Although we don't particularly enjoy Philby's position of power as MI6 chief, we can't ignore his good management of the agency so far. Rather than antagonize him further by trying to push him out, maybe we can get in his good graces, taking our hands off the agency. Although this, this could bolster the remaining hardliners in our party, it's a small price to pay to ensure a strong intelligence agency, and we're only literally doing it just because we can. Because as you can tell from the title, this is the final episode. There's really not much left for this campaign. Um, thoughts on the campaign? My thoughts? It's not bad. I, like I said before, I think in the last episode of the episode before that, I, I, I don't know. I just, I could not, I don't know, a rework, but maybe a repolishing, maybe? I don't know. I, I would like to see more effects happen. Maybe from, like, this stuff. I like that we're addressing want, disease, ignorance, squalor, idleness. I don't know. Maybe this is more of a build-up. Maybe build more local, like, I don't know. I'm not really sure. Because once you do it, it's done. It's over. But England arise. We have done it. We have brought peace, justice, and prosperity to the toiling people of England. The workers is entitled to the fruits of his labor. The woman, is, the woman is equal to man in all aspects of life. The Bolshevik and reactionary have no sway over the people. Freedom reigns supreme over our land once enslaved by fascism. Force of arms won us a war. Strength, and mo strength of mind gave us new democratic system. The power of spirit gave us the incentive to push on to where, my apologies, uh, where we are now. The great victory belongs to all of us, even to those who do not agree with our ideals. We gallantly stride into a new age of plenty. I really confident in our ability to protect and pr prove England even more. The sun rises in the east, and a long last night, long night is over. And that's it. Okay, that's literally it. Um. Yeah, okay, thanks for playing. This, that's wow. Okay, that's literally it. That's kind of. I'll be honest. That's kind of sad. So, uh, yeah. Well. We'll see. We'll definitely see. Unite the public after the brutality of the Civil War and the hard-fought election that followed. English society has become more divided than ever. The country is in desperate need of a unifying figure that will heal the wounds of the past, and we believe we can make the Socialist Labor Party into such a rallying point. Brining, 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 or bringing the public behind the SLP is vital for the long-term success of our country alongside our party. Which would be great. So at this point, I'm just going to use console commands, so we'll get through this one first. But at this point, there's really nothing else here for us, which I guess it kind of earlier. It's just, I don't know, this is... I wouldn't say it's disappointing. I mean, this is nice and all, and I, I love I love the idea of helping out society, improving you know poverty, uh, equipment, academic bases, and such like that. But I don't know. Just I feel like we I, maybe I'm expecting some sort of big big ending for us here, but I don't know. I just I was just I was just hoping for like you know say at the end we've done it. We've achieved the things we wanted. We've helped poverty out, which we which we are. Don't get me wrong. We are. We totally are. But like. There's not like a, I don't know, just a big event at the end. 
to prepare us for TNO2. But then again, I guess you can't expect that of every campaign in TNO. But here we're going to use God's commands. F-A, thank you. The Ring of Fire. In the Second World War, the German bombing campaign proved a major factor in the UK's downfall, with German bombers crippling British industry and devastating morale, often leaving entire cities in near ruin. This cannot be allowed to happen again. England must be protected. The Ring is an idea that has been on the drawing board since the days of the Renaissance resistance. The proposal calls for numerous anti-air defenses to be built all along our coasts, from the White Cliffs of Dover to the Scottish border. These fortifications will ensure that any enemy plane that enters our airspace is met with a wall of flak and anti-air missiles. This, combined with a new air force, will ensure that the Luftwaffe never again threatens an English home or factory again. Mines of an explosive kind. Britain's pride used to be its navy, but as things currently stand, however, we are outclassed and outgunned. However, a bomb doesn't care if it's a top-of-the-line warship that destroys it. It destroys it all the same. To protect our lands, of course, we must litter the seas with mines, improved and more efficient mine-laying operations, and more explosive and destructive mines are the order of the day. If we can't defend Britain with a fleet, we'll make darn well sure that no one else can invade us with, with one. That sounds really good. Improving our radars. A great part of the defeating the enemy is knowing where they are and where they are going to be. Though the Germans were able to pierce it in the war, radar was such an incredible boon for our forces that it enabled us to hold out their assault for far longer than we'd ever hope, even if we ultimately failed. Improved radar systems and stations all across the aisle will let us know far in advance whether or not an enemy tends to attack, and give us the appropriate time to mobilize an effective response. This time, we'll have to them by the scruffs of their necks. Deeper and quieter. Ooh, our navy is not even a shade of what it used to be, but we have to ask ourselves, what good did it do us? Britain still lost the war to the German wolf packs and superior naval tactics as such an expansive naval grand navy. A surplus to requirements. What we need is to focus on submarine warfare and assass as assassins skill kings, so too do subs befell battleships and carriers. Britain's navy shall not be grand, but it shall be feared with a new generation of subs. In our ongoing efforts to emphasize submarine warfare, we've reached a barrier. The simple technical limitations of our current models, there's only so much that can be improved upon before the very nature of what we're improving on becomes the limiting factor. To overcome this, we must design and produce new, better generations of subs. One that can delve deeper, travel further, strike silently, and slink away into the night without our enemies none the wiser. And then lessons for 43. By all accounts, a German invasion in 1943 should have been impossible. Operation Sea Lion should have ended in miserable failure and the complete destruction of the Kriegsmarine, but it didn't. Instead, I saw the Royal Navy defeated, and the British Isle was successfully invaded for the first time since William the Conqueror. Where did it all go wrong? We must examine those dark days closely to learn what we can from them and ensure that such an invasion never again reaches our shores. And new fortifications. For nearly 1,000 years before the war, no enemy force stepped foot on British soil. Our defeat in the war came in part from a Belief that no force could, we were wrong. From Dover to Bristol, we must expand, uh, build expansive fortification networks along our coastlines, so that if an enemy lands on the isle, their visit shall not be for very long, and certainly not be a pleasant one. Lots of supports are nice, more debt, but whatever. Issue conscription. I think I've read this one before, so if you read this one, please go ahead. Good. Issue of conscription. After some debate in Parliament, three options have emerged as a plausible path to reforming an army. The first is removing conscription entirely and opting for a volunteer force. Our brave Tommies guard the, guarded the Isles for hundreds of years, and now that England is at peace, we can afford a, to restore a great tradition of a small professional army. This will be very popular and increase our political standing. We can also keep conscription just as it is. A civil war decimated many of our unions, and we'll need to keep our men up to snuff, including reserves, to make sure that any German intervention can be parried also. We can begin to reassert ourselves over the Isles from a stronger position. Since this is currently the status quo, it is on also unlikely to do damage to our standing amongst the populace. The third position or option is increasing conscription. This will make our army's position stronger, but might have serious consequences for us politically. It would allow the hardliners to edge and give them something to promise, defecting members from our faction. Furthermore, the populace would probably be furious that his peace is declared we increase conscription. Should we make, remake our volunteer army, keep conscription the same, or increase consumption? Also, if you want to read about praising aces again, please go ahead. I did that earlier, but I had to replay the game, basically, so. And if you want to read this one too, please go ahead as well. There you go. Cool. Um... I don't think we actually read through this stuff, though. Uh, let's see. Pieces here. Let's, let's demobilize. We must remain vigilant to keep the pre-war civil, pre civil war conscription laws. We must begin to assert ourselves increase conscription. Wait. One year draft. You get a lot more population, authoritarian social, and less political power. Higher learners get a boost. Everyone's state will like the social slavery's politics. But progress. We want more progress. That's fine. It's not bad. British pilots, American planes, to make modern aircraft, we can either rely on the expertise of the Americans or try to build our own designs. While the research in the engineering departments may be smaller than theirs, we know exactly what we want and the capabilities of our industries are. However, there are more than engineering concerns to think about. The political ramifications of obtaining blueprints for our aircraft from the Americans will be closer ties with the U.S. This is acceptable to some in our party. But many hardliners claim that we need independence to maintain our global position and ensure England's continued sovereignty. Others have taken a more pragmatic or desperate approach, claiming that our current program is insufficient to reduce or produce our own designs. Should we get proven designs from the Americans or take our own path through our planes. This is our Air Force, we need our own planes. Alright, not bad. Or the Hardliners are overreacting. Ask the Americans for blueprints. I like that, but we won't go to reformists. 
effective strike force. The logical conclusion of the conscription uh, concentration policy is to make each division capable of supporting itself in these aggressive actions. Therefore, each division should be sufficiently equipped to make a local breakthrough in this sector. While this means a significant amount of equipment will have to be requisitioned, it will give us an aggressive spirit that cannot be matched, as each divisional commander knows that he can strike the enemy where he is weakest. The initiative will always be with us, and we can choose the field of battle as it suits our lads. Tally ho! Armed unions? The unions are naturally a central part of a revolution, but arming them could radicalize the workers. Naturally, this would be a normally perfectly good idea. And would afford the average worker a good deal of power, but the stability of the government, and by extension the army, is surely a better defense of the revolution than some armed laborers. However, our precarious international situation means that we need everyone who can bear arms to do so, should a crisis erupt. The more familiar the people are with arms now, the better they will be as real soldiers later. <clears throat> There's been a debate since the end of the war as to whether or not we should demobilize the unions and the men and women who fought for us during the war. Should the unions remain officially armed, it would provide an excellent reserve of partially trained manpower for our army, but it might cause a logistical nightmare for our armaments and therefore our army as a whole. However, if we strip them of, our, of their arms, it would greatly upset some of our MPs who believe that the unions were critical to winning the war, and that an armed populace is a necessary part of our new revolution. However, streamlining resources and manpower to our army would result in increased professionalism and functionality. Should we disarm the unions or keep them as an official part of the army? We need as many soldiers as we can get to keep them. Not bad, but you lose division defense on core territory, of course. Informers get more of a boost, versus we don't need half trained militias anymore. Disarm them. Mmm, look at this one. The Legacy of the Mosquito. The innovative design of the Mosquito Fighter Bomber was born out of desperation, but was shockingly fast and agile for its role. In today's jet age, we may be able to take the same concept of a high-speed light bomber and create a multi-role aircraft that is quick on an attack and agile on defense. This will be able to defend the homeland by striking and invading forces while still being a threat across the channel to any hostile power. The heritage of the Typhoon. The Typhoon's fighter bomb was also not so elegant as a Spitfire, nor as nimble as a Mosquito, but it got the job done. The raw firepower and reliability possessed in a neat little airframe was perfect for its role, and should not be underestimated. These same principles of getting the job done with simplicity and practicality should be emulated in our new generation of fighter bombers to ensure that any baiter gets a handful when they hit the beaches. The Legend of the Spitfire. The elegant Spitfire was the backbone of our interceptor air defenses during the Blitz and would go on to serve many roles in the war. The sleek lines, high speed, and excellent maneuverability made it perfect for escorting fighters in a close-up fight. We will need a new generation of interceptors if we are to prevent England from being destroyed from the air. And this means relying on the same principles of old. Our new fighter designs will have to be the best of the best to protect England from any serious airborne menace and rebuilding the air bases or airports. We certainly need pilots and planes to build an air force, but we need airports for them to fly from if they're going to do anything useful. This means hangars, as Asphalt, concrete, fueling stations, and all the menagerie of maintenance required to keep airplanes up in the air. All this will take time and money, but we have to get it done quickly if we're going to ensure that organization, refitting, and training can begin. Let's get babying! And more anti-air. Our radar and anti-aircraft systems help greatly during the Blitz, and modern air defensive networks can render friendly skies an extremely uncomfortable place for enemy aircraft. Distributed and protected missile batteries with radar stations and spotters can attrit an enemy air force and provide a value invaluable information to our pilots in the sky who can be directed to attack whatever remains, or what remains, in the most optimal fashion in thunder and lightning. Ooh, baby. The next war will be thoroughly modern, that means we need the firepower to match. Our artillery designs are too old and dated to be of much use on quickly moving battlefields. <clears throat> And so we must push towards with new and innovative designs that will give our soldiers an edge in a tough fight. Combined with our new tactics and experienced troops, this will give us a winning formula when the next challenge comes and new tank models. In order to really achieve a breakthrough, we will need tanks as well as experienced infantry. As of now, our tank arm is hopefully outdated and we must integrate new technologies and designs to make sure that our armored formations can meet and defeat every new threat they face on a modern battlefield, including newer anti-tank rockets, mines, and other tanks. Once we have the firepower to match, we can create a real modern army with great striking power and finally we will finish with... An army to protect the revolution. We have the tanks, weapons, soldiers. With the core of our army complete, we have a professional battle hardened army with the best equipment in Europe. Our safety and the safety of our revolution is now assured. When the time comes, they'll fight for the revolution and they will win. And my friends, that is it with the Commonwealth of Britain, which I don't know why it's still bugged, but Harold Wilson, he's just kind of a buggy guy, which kind of sucks, but hey, it is what it is. But if you enjoyed the campaign, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know your thoughts on this campaign. Um, what, if you watched all the way through, which if you did, thank you very much. Um, but if you watched it all the way through, please let me know what are your thoughts on this campaign in the comments below. Thanks for watching, though, and have a great, great, great rest of your day.